Hello and welcome to another segment of Pierced Off. My name is Jonathan M.S. Pierce and this is for the Skeptical Podcast. I am Pierced Off this week about God. So, back to talking about the characteristics of God. God being this kind of weird concept whereby God has characteristics and personhood but doesn't have a physical body or anything that would would normally in in the entire world that we know it produce anything like personhood. Now I love this quote that I'm going to read to you from Valerie Tarico in her chapter God's Emotions in John Loftus's book The End of Christianity and here is a quote to say that the descriptions of God in the Bible are metaphors does not make the situation any better. A metaphor about something as deep as a human relationship to ultimate reality needs to be deeply accurate. The centre of gravity needs to be spot on, even if the surface meaning is grossly simplistic. But biblical descriptions of God have this backwards. Rather than heightening the sense of an ineffable power that is compatible with philosophical concepts like omniscience or omnipresence or with the laws of physics and biology, they force divinity into a human template. Rather than evoking the humility, wonder and delight of the unknown, they offer the comfort of false knowledge. Rather than being true to timeless placeless completeness, they are true to the place-time culture ecosystem nexus in which they arose. When the writers of the Bible said God was angry or regretful or pleased, they had only a superficial idea of what these words actually mean. How could they know that these effective labels describe intricate, functional body systems just like our visible appendages? Their peers didn't yet understand how two eyes create binocularity or how our muscles contract the hand, let alone the chemistry and function of emotions. They were not responsible for their ignorance. They did the best they could with the information at their disposal. They looked at patterns in the natural world and human society and made their best guesses about what lies beyond. We should do the same. And that's from page 177. Now, the idea of this is that we can place human emotions in a functional paradigm within humanity. So in an evolutionary perspective, emotions have functions that allow us to either reproduce or survive. You know, they are useful things to have and they come about through the biochemistry of our bodies. Without this kind of paradigm, emotions don't really have a place. You know, what function do they have? So to then claim that God not only has personhood, but all these kind of emotions, whether it be jealousy, anger, wrath, love, all these kind of things that we associate with personhood and humanity, does it make sense with a God, especially if the God is just a, an abstract concept, you know, a non physical entity how does it work and and why does it work and what function do they have and does it make any sense is this just a massive anthropomorphism of god you know we are turning god into a human because that's all we know and all we understand and in fact when you invent something you invent things which you understand and which are like you so the idea here from from my little talk now and for you guys to talk about and discuss back in the office is that God has no need for emotions and many aspects of personhood and in fact that God has these characteristics merely shows that we're either not very good at inventing God because we make God just like us or we're not very good at piecing together the anthropomorphic God of the Bible with the philosopher's God with the the characteristics of omnipotence, omniscience, omnibenevolence, omnipresence and all that. So there you go. As ever, question everything and please pop by my blog. I'm a tippling philosopher.